I'm Shovel and welcome to my channel. I'm practicing wearing contacts today for my Halloween costume. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. So today we're playing Choices. We're now on chapter five of 15. Chapter five, a rock in a hard place. The morning after the winter carnival, you drive to Aiden's house to check up on him. A harried woman meets you at the door. Hi, I'm Shelby, Aiden and I, you go to school together. Yes, I know, I've seen photos. Come inside, you're letting the cold in. You step into the house and shut the door behind you. A man sits on the couch drinking a cup of coffee. He looks up as you enter. Hi, you must be Aiden's parents. I believe he said your names are Glenn and Bridget. Mr. and Mrs. Zhao, I think. Is it Zhao? I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. Anyway, is Aiden home? He's upstairs in his room, but no, you can't talk to him. <laughs> okay. I can't? He's grounded. Ooh, he's in trouble. Grounded? For how long? Isn't that an overreaction? Mm. They seem like tough parents. I'm gonna ask for how long? For at least as long as he's suspended. Ooh, he did get suspended. <gasps> Dude. I mean, I don't think it was his fault. Aiden suspended? Principal Issa called us last night. Apparently that poor boy Lewis was in the hospital for seven hours. And so Issa suspended Aiden? Don't be so surprised. From what she's told us, he's planned this event, then shirked off his responsibilities to goof off. Of course, it's partly our fault. We should have taken action as soon as we found out he was spending time with people like you and Michael. Me? Maybe Michael, but me? Me? We've been concerned ever since Aiden started staying out past midnight with you and your friends instead of practicing his music like he always does. It's not like him at all. We thought it was typical teenage behavior, but then we find out someone's been put in the hospital. Not only that, Principal Issa also informed us that you got him involved in a breaking and entering incident at Hearst High a few months ago. Mr. and Mrs. Zhao, I know for sure that I'm pronouncing this wrong, but I don't have anyone to ask immediately right now to correct me, so I'm very sorry. Principal Lisa has blown this all out of proportion. I'm sorry I never meant to be a bad influence. They don't have any proof that I was ever at Hearst, so blown out of proportion. She wanted someone to make an example of and Aiden was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Who are we supposed to believe, you or the principal? Girl, me. Look, I, you're interrupted by a voice coming from behind you. You turn around and see Aiden standing by the hallway. Shelby, Aiden, go back to your room. Please, Mom and Dad, Shelby came all this way and I'm going to talk to her. Absolutely not. You're being punished. You've locked me in my room indefinitely, taken away my electronics, and forced me to quit band. Hang on, you had to quit band too? Of course, he's suspended for something that happened at a band fundraiser. But band means everything to Aiden. Exactly. Isn't taking that away punishment enough? Bridget, we need to choose our battles. Shelby, I don't like your attitude, but you did care enough to come here. I'll let you talk to him just this once. Mrs. Al and I are going to go walk the dog. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Please don't be here when we return. But it's okay, I promise. I have to pay. They're already letting me talk to him. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna play an ad here. But don't blame me. As the door closes, you and Aiden turn to each other. Aiden begins pacing the room, eyes cast down. Aiden, I wish there was something I could do. Me too. But there's nothing. Mom and Dad have decided that all my friends are degenerates and that I'm better off locked in my room. I'm glad they let me see you with their opinion of me. I'm sorry about that, by the way. They've been distraught ever since Issa told them I was suspended. Don't worry about me. You have enough other things on your mind. The worst part is that I can't really make music now. I'm allowed a single hour to practice piano just so I can keep my skill up. Aiden, you don't need an instrument to compose. Go on, I'm listening. I think he would know <laughs> better when it comes to music, so I'm gonna tell him to go on. I'm being a good listener. You remember what I was like when you first met me. It was all about classical music all the time. Seems like it still is most of the time. Sure, I am who I am, but I know now that there's more to life too. But your parents don't see it that way? If they did before, they don't now. All they see is their son, the suspended. Do you regret anything then? I, no, nothing. He didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't even him. Michael was right about Issa and the hall monitors. I wanted to believe that it was just to restore order. But Issa's a power hungry, manipulative tyrant and she threw me under the bus. Okay, well I mean he's like a little bit at fault and somebody did break their arm. This is what I get for keeping my head down. This is what I get for being naive about her. None of this is your fault, it was an accident. Aiden stops pacing and looks at you, his eyes glassy with tears. That is exactly my point. None of this is my fault, but here we are anyway. It's ridiculous and all the hall monitors are just as bad. Between you and me, I think Issa's manipulating them. I can't believe Kayla and Morgan turned me in. Someone broke their arm. I don't know. I'm not fully agreeing with him right now. I think the hall monitors are doing their best in a weird situation, sucking up and it's disappointing. I think they're doing their best. Someone broke their arm. Issa's 
basically blackmailing people. Like, if Morgan doesn't help, she's in a lot of trouble. I don't know what I would do in her place. I guess. I'm not sure who I can trust at this school anymore. At least I feel safe around you, Shelby. I don't know how you're holding up, but you're still you. Aiden checks his watch, his face falling. Our ten minutes are almost up. I might not see you for a while. We still have a few moments. Why does this sound romantic? I should... Whoa! I'm... <laughs> I'm taken. I'm gonna hug Aiden. You wrap your arms tightly around Aiden, holding him close. None of this is okay. He rests his head on your shoulder and presses his palms into your back. Why is this weird? I don't think I'd be okay without you right now. I had to say goodbye, even though it'll be temporary. Maybe you can sneak texts to me while you're grounded. This lockdown won't last. I don't care what I have to do, you will see me again. I'll see if I can clear your name at school. You're possibly my last hope, Shelby. You pull away and glance at the clock. We have less than a minute left. I need to go. Don't want to make your parents any more upset with me than they already are. Wait! Aiden pulls you in for one more quick hug. It's over all too fast. Mm, no, I think just fast enough. Goodbye, Aiden. I'll see you soon. Now go. Why is this so weird? Stop making it weird. You take your keys out of your pocket and you hurry out the front door. You watch Aiden return upstairs to his room from the window. Back at home. You head up to your room and start checking your email when you hear your dad at the door. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad you have a dad who loves you so much. Haha, <laughs> good one, dad. Really? Not even a proper groan this time? I'm sorry. I'm just worried about Aiden, Principal Isa. We have a boyfriend. Well, are we official? I don't actually know. Principal Isa. We're worried about Principal Isa. She's always been harsh, and now she suspended Aiden because of the Sledding Hill incident. It just seems like an abuse of power. Your dad comes up behind you and puts an arm around your shoulder. I'm sorry, that's horrible. Is there anything you could do? Complain to the school board or something? If you were the one suspended, I could try to appeal it, but if Aiden's parents haven't complained, the school board isn't going to listen. Besides, Principal Isa hasn't technically broken any rules. You sigh and hunch over, putting your head in your hands. But I do have some good news. You do? What is it? There's a crown and the flame marathon on the XYZ Friends channel this weekend. What are all of these things? Really, Dad? That's your idea of good news? I thought you loved the crown and the flame. Just then your phone buzzes. Hang on, I just got a text. You pick up your phone and see Emma's name appear on the screen. Oh my god, I've never seen them do something like this before. Hey, Shelby, can you help me with something? Help you? Does it mean we'll get to hang out? Why not ask Lewis? I've been wanting to hang out with Emma for like four episodes. We're only on like episode five. <laughs> it does. Yay! I feel like we never see each other outside of school these days. Maybe it's because the game never lets me choose to hang out with my friends or makes everything romantic. Yeah, this quarter has been crazy busy. Did something happen? Not really. Mom's been working more, so I've had to do extra housework. Speaking of which, she wants me to clean out the attic this afternoon. Is that what you need my help with? If you could, I don't want to go alone. It's really scary up there. LOL, that bad? Okay, not really, but there's a lot of stuff from my dad and sister up there. Sister? I didn't know you had a sister. That's because she and I barely talk. <gasps> this is like one of those different apps where you just read texts. I think it's called Hooked. Should we do some of that? She won't even friend me on FaceSpace. Oh, sorry to bring it up. Didn't she bring it up? No, it's okay. I guess I'm going to have to go through her stuff later anyway. Her name's Robin, by the way. Anyway, do you think you can come? I kind of don't want to do this alone. Helping Emma will give you the chance to learn more about her family and strengthen your relationship, either as a friend or as more. How about just a friend? How about relax? Of course I'll help. I'm spending today with my dad, sorry. Of course I'll help. All I've wanted was to hang out with my best friend. I'll be over in half an hour. I knew I could count on you. A short while later at Emma's house. You follow Emma up the trap door ladder into the attic. That is spooky. She switches on the lights and you both set down the boxes you were carrying. Wow, you weren't kidding about it being spooky up here. Look at these cobwebs. There's probably spiders in here. You poke at one of the cobwebs with your finger, releasing a giant cloud of dust into the air. Emma starts to cough. How long has it been since someone came up here? Emma coughs again and clears her throat. Two and a half years? When my dad and Robin left, my mom put all their stuff in the attic. No one's gone up here since. So why clean it now? My mom found a consignment shop. What? A what? A what? Apparently they're going to give us a good deal. She said to sort everything into stuff we think they'll buy and stuff to throw out. You open up a nearby box and see it's full of books. You take out the top one and hold it up for Emma. At the corner of the back inside cover, you see a name signed in pencil. Julia Mason. You're hit with a feeling of deja vu. Hey Emma, is Julia Mason your mother? Yeah, why? The name seems familiar. I mean, it's her name. You've probably heard me mention it before. No, I'm sure I've heard it somewhere before I met you. 
like in a newspaper or something. If he did, it's probably someone else with the same name. Whatever my mother's chances of getting her name in the newspaper were, I think it's safe to say they were ruined when dad got her pregnant and forced her to drop out of college. This is dramatic. Is that what happened? I can't believe she told you. Are you certain? Are you certain? I kind of want to, I don't know. I'm assuming her mom told her that. I suppose there could be other explanations, but my mom dropped out during her junior year of college to marry my dad. She just turned 40 recently and my sister is currently 19. It's kind of obvious there was a shotgun wedding. When did you realize? I was eight. Robin told me. She said it was why mom hated her. Your mom hated Robin? No, she didn't. At least I don't think she did. But even if she did, it was because Robin was so mean to her, not because of when she was born. Emma runs her fingers through her hair and shakes her head. I'm sorry, I shouldn't burden you with all of this. Maybe you should go home. Emma, you're not a burden. Do you want me to go home? She's not a burden. She can tell me if she wants me to go home, but she's not a burden. But I know you have so much on your mind with the new basketball coach and the other teams losing their funding. That doesn't mean I can't support you too. Emma wraps her arms around you in a tight hug. Let's not kiss though. I don't know what I did to deserve a friend like you. I can make a list if you'd like. Number one, on the first day of school, you were the only person willing to help me. Number two, okay, silly, but still. I guess I'm just not used to having people listen to me. Having you around is weird. What about your mother, your father, your sister? She lives with her mother, so I'm gonna ask if her mother listens to her. I didn't want to burden her with my problems. Back before the divorce, she got enough crap from my dad and Robin. My problems didn't seem so bad in comparison. She has to focus on work. Dad left us the house, but no way to pay for the mortgage. That's thoughtful. But Emma, you shouldn't ignore your own needs for other people's. I know I shouldn't, but sometimes I don't have a choice. Shelby, thank you for everything. You have no idea how much better life is when someone cares for you as much as you do for them. What do I do? Hug her? Give her a friendly laugh. I can hug her. Just don't ask me to kiss her. You wrap Emma tightly in your arms. She lets the weight of her head rest on your shoulder. Emma, I promise you'll always have me. As friends. You'd think I'd be used to hearing that by now. Take your time. Like I said, I'm not going anywhere. As friends. Although speaking of taking our time, we've been up here for a while and haven't gotten much of anything clean. Come here, let's start with this box over here. You spend the next few hours chatting and sorting. By the time you leave, the attic is completely clean. Monday afternoon. You stop by your locker to put away your books when you get a text from Peyton. Important, if you helped with a fair on Saturday, come to the gym for an emergency meeting ASAP. You put your phone away and rush to the gym. By the time everyone's assembled in the gym, Peyton is inconsolable. Peyton, what is going on? Oh, Shelby, it's awful. Literally the worst thing to happen since Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris split up. They split up? Wait a sec, is this about a breakup? No, guys, worse. After Lewis broke his wrist, Principal Issa made me give her a bunch of our carnival money to pay for his hospital bills. It turns out we only have enough money for one activity to go on a spring break trip. Is that what they really want to use the money for? Am I wrong in thinking they should be using it for equipment and stuff? Seriously? But we worked so hard. Why did she take our money for Lewis's medical bills? At least the carnival was fun, right? I mean, I can guess why she took our money instead of using any other money. I don't know. I'm just gonna say, but we worked so hard. Two weeks of planning and work and we only made half the money we needed. We were only a little bit short, but it turns out x-rays are really expensive. I'm really sorry, everyone. I should have been more careful. Accidents happen, Lewis. Besides, you didn't ask for us to pay for your medical bills. But the big question is what we're gonna do with the money we did make. Easy, band should get it. Guys, whose idea was it to have this carnival in the first place? Aiden, a band member. A few students, most of them from band, murmur in agreement. No, listen to me. First of all, the carriage ride was by far the most profitable activity at the carnival. So most of the money came from cheerleading. Second, Aiden, a band member, was the one responsible for the accident. As far as I'm concerned, band already spent half of their money. I didn't agree to give Issa the money. Peyton, a cheerleader did. Guys, I guess we know where Ezra and Mia stand. Does anyone else want to speak or should we take a vote? You raised your hand. No, I don't. No, I don't. Put it back down. Mia and Ezra both make good points. Ezra's right, Mia's right, we should flip a coin. I really don't want to decide, so I'm gonna have them flip a coin. You want to leave something this important up to chance? Yup. The way I see it, someone's going to be disappointed no matter what. The best we can do is make sure it's not personal. I'll take heads. Which means I'm tails. Flip it? Is this gonna actually be random? You toss the coin in the air and let it fall to the ground, where it lands on... Tails! How did... how did they... Was that really random? Really? But we worked so hard. Honestly, I like was a little bit leaning towards cheerleading. Maybe I should have picked cheerleading. I'm sorry, I... Whoa there. Shelby was just trying to do what she thought was right. You can't blame her for that. That's easy for you to say. You're the one who took all of our money to begin with. But Sid, we... Don't you Sid her, mister. Only her friends can call her that. Yeah, and we've been working way too hard not to get to go to competition. So is banned, Sydney. The argument gets interrupted by a chuckle coming from the side of the room. Everyone turns to look at Wes. 
I can't believe you're all falling for this while Issa turns the school into a police state. Please, Wes, Issa's strictness has nothing to do with this. Actually, it has everything to do with this. It has everything to do with this. While you're all distracted with your infighting, this school is turning into 1984. Wes, you're on to something. Is everything about defying authority for you? I hope you have proof for this. No, he's on to something. I said it literally right before he said it. You can't be buying this, Shelby. Don't you know what kind of person Wes is? Don't you, Caleb? Wes's ideas may sound out there, but he's usually right on the money. It would make sense, especially with the whole hall monitor initiative. Come to think of it, why are there so many hall monitors on the basketball team? And none in the band or on the cheer squad. You know why. They're so determined to stay Issa's favorites, they'd kill another student if she asked. If they didn't need Issa, you can bet they'd see it our way. Okay, I don't know if I agree with that, actually. Wes, how dare you? You know that's not the reason I joined. Oh, please, of course it is. If you really wanted to help with the school, You'd be helping expose Issa for who she really is. A crowd starts forming around Wes and Autumn. The air fills with whispers. I feel like he's falling for it too. She's just trying to split everybody up. Hey, let's not. But no, all you care about is getting off the waitlist for some art school. Do you honestly expect me to give up my entire future over some stupid teenage drama? Autumn, Wes, maybe you could take this argument, but Wes shouts over you as if you aren't there. Stupid teenage drama, is that what you think this is? That's what it is. That's what it's always been with you. You think you're some genius vigilante, but you're really just a manipulative, ooh, that's a bad word, who needs to destroy what he can't control. Please, there's no need for name calling. This is about Issa, remember? It is about Issa. This is exactly what she wants from us. Peyton puts a hand firmly on your shoulder. Shelby, there's nothing you can say. Wes and Autumn have a longer history than you know. Were they having problems with their relationship before? I don't know, this is news to me. We should probably stay out of this for now. Autumn, you of all people know that it's not about power. It's because I, we're not 15 year old nobodies anymore, Wes. Stop thinking of yourself as one. I'm tired of making excuses. If you're so tired, why are you dating me? The room goes dead silent at that. Autumn looks down, suddenly self-conscious. You're right, I made a mistake and now I'm going to correct it. Wes, it's over, for good this time. This time? Julian! Go swoop in. No. <gasps> Next time on High School Story! In the wake of the carnival disaster, Issa has some new rules. Is this the last straw? What did I say about every cliffhanger getting worse? And I'm not excited about it. That's gonna be it for today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching. Leave a comment down below to tell me what you think is gonna happen next. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!